there are a few vehicles that earn and deserve the title of legendary. This is one of them. The seven slatted grill that is obviously traditional and tells you immediately that it's a Jeep. On this latest version of the Grand Cherokee, you can see it's tilted slightly forward, which is a sign of the latest generation model. Launched very, very recently in South Africa. We were at the launch, you saw it, you saw it in action, you saw a lot of off-road action as well. So we're not going to concentrate as much on that right now. It's a big vehicle. But this is the five-seater version. Just keep that in mind. Lovely 20-inch alloy wheels over here. You've got the adjustable ride height, but you can see even on a medium height, you've got, sp you've got room over here to allow for articulation on these wheels if you do go off-road or if you do go anything like that. There is an auto setting that will allow it to adjust the ride height for aerodynamic efficiency if you're on the freeway, things like that. So it's got all those kind of features. You come along, it's a long, big vehicle. We know that. Let's pop open the back door over here to show you for example, I'll jump in now. The driver's seat is always set for myself, obviously, and that's a very deliberate thing to do. I'm sure you understand. And you can see the tons of space that I've got in the back seat. It really is stretch out space. You take a look in the center over here. You've got features like air convents for the rear. And below that, look at that. You've got two USBs, A's and C's two of each, you've got a 12 volt, and you've got buttons over here for heating on the rear seats. So your rear seat passengers are really well catered for, and you've got to allow, take that into account, and that's the kind of obviously premium that you are looking at and that you expect from this vehicle. Just the premium touches, shall we call them. You come around to the back, and you see you've got the wraparound tail lights over here into a light bar across the center. It's been a little bit off-road with me, not much, so you can see a little bit of mud and dust on the car. I'm not going to apologize for that. It's the mid-spec overland model we're driving right now. You do get the Limited as the entry and the Summit Reserve as the top model. You would expect, obviously, and you get powered tailgate now remembering that this bar doesn't even, isn't against the rear seats, but just take a look, should we do the usual, and tell you. I've said about two Allen boots, this could even be a three Allen boot over here right now. That is how much space you've got. It, the five seater is slightly shorter than the seven seater, but of course, even more boot space when you're in five-seater mode. It really is massive. And you do have a spare wheel over here, although it is not a full-size wheel, but you do get a spare wheel over here. So it is appreciated. Probably, I see they say a 120 kilometer an hour limit on this one, not an 80 that you get with some. Still, at least you do have it. And a very neat touch on the rear that I do like is on a lot of larger SUVs, it's a massive reach where you would normally press the button to close the tailgate. So what have Jeep done? Very cleverly, look where that button is. You press it over there. Step out the way, and there the tailgate will close for you. I mentioned there are three models in the range. They're all powered by the same 3.6 liter V6 petrol engine putting out 210 kilowatts, 344 newton meters of torque to all four wheels through an ultra, ultra slick eight-speed automatic transmission. Let's check it on the road. Let's have a look inside. My name is Michael Pachut and I'm the proud owner of Change Cars and the host of the TV show All Things Motoring. But I'm even prouder today to say that I work with Ellen Rosenmeyer from Motor Matters better known as a man with a hat. If you're looking for the best reviews on all new vehicles, Motor Matters. If you're looking for the best deals on new or used cars, changecars.co.za, where every car is sold by a five-star rated manufacturer approved dealer. It really doesn't matter what kind of terrain you're trying to tackle. 
Grand Cherokee just takes everything in its stride. It's built to do it. Most people. So that was the rocky bit. So let's just look at how it handles on a sandy dirt road. What do you want to call this? But I mean, it's really not a bad piece of road at all, but it is just, it is just so easy, so comfortable, so smooth. It's just everything you ever want. You can see over here, you look in the mirror, you'll see the dust flying, the dirt flying outside the car on the side mirrors as well. I love showing these views of the dust flying and you can see biggest standout on this car has got to be the smoothness. Obviously you've got your air suspension, you've got all your different off-road suspension, you've got everything and all the tricks that you would expect on a luxury family SUV. But it's just how smooth and obviously it doesn't matter how good or bad the road is, it's not going to matter with this Grand Cherokee. It really just makes no difference. And the other thing is that in normal cruising, that eight-speed auto transmission, you just do not feel a gear shift. You've got the option of a sport mode. I mean, really, what for, quite honestly? I just absolutely cannot see the need. The sheer power of this 3.6-litre V6 motor, 210 kilowatts, 344 newton meters, and here comes its brother coming towards us. How's that? another new Grand Cherokee over there. I couldn't see if it was an L or not, but it really doesn't matter. But you'll see this piece of road, you should know it by now on our videos, it's not exactly the best piece of road around. It's not in wonderful condition, but it really just makes no difference, this car. It'll just cruise all day. And as for getting onto a freeway, ha, ah, that's where it really, but just feel this power up the hill now. And it just really, I mean, this is your typical American, no replacement for displacement, as I would put it, because that 3.6 liters, no, it's not a V8, not quite. Wish we'd get the V8 option in South Africa, but it just makes no difference, and it's just going to go and keep going and keep going all the way. And that's just on the road, and it's just another ball game entirely if you go off road, hit a track, hit an off road or anything of that sort. You've seen from the launch videos and things like that exactly how capable it is in those circumstances. Let's just have a look at our three-point turn. It's not going to be easy, I can tell you now. It's such a big vehicle, but it doesn't matter. Just bring the camera down because we may as well show how great the reverse camera is as well while I'm doing this turn. I mean, it really obviously has the active lines that turn and swing with you. Looking at the dash in front of me as we always start on the inside of the car and you can see it's configurable, it's a digital display. I'm not going to go through all of it but you know you can reconfigure it, you can change it, you can do what you want. But the crucial figure is that one over there. We've done 631 kilometers on the test so far, averaging 12.1 liters per hundred. Now that is freeway cruising urban. It's a real good mix and I can tell you this is the kind of figure most owners should achieve with this car. So no, it's not light on fuel, it's never pretended to be, it's not that kind of car if that's what you're looking for. I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen or not right now, there is a very good heads up display in front of the driver, but I don't think you can pick it up on camera there, you can actually right now. You can see it shows the speed and actually shows the lane, keep assist, lane departure uh, assist as well, those lines over there that do show when you are on the heads up as well. I must be honest, I find that system a little bit over intrusive and I have been switching it off quite a lot because that lane keep I find just totally over sensitive for my personal liking. If you come back down to the obviously the multifunction steering wheel over here, as I'm sure you're used to seeing, active cruise control, active everything. The safety spec, the safety levels on this car are everything you would expect at the top top level and you have a look on the door over here you'll notice as well for example me two memory settings for the driver's seat which obviously is electric as is the passenger seat and over there one of the highlights of the overland and summit reserve models are the incredibly powerful upgraded macintosh sound system again really something special and something that does really give you more than everything you would want. 
If you come across to the center screen over here, you'll see it's on Android Auto at the moment. But again, it's one of these that gives you absolutely everything you could possibly want, including obviously your off-road settings and things like that. I, if I had to go into it all, I would spend all day, but I think you get the idea of what I'm saying, safety and driving assistance. It's got absolutely every possible function feature that you could want while you're busy with that screen, I believe. Above the screen over here are a few buttons. I mentioned your stop start, your lane keep assist, etc. And this one over here is a feature again of Overland and uh, Summit Reserve. Press that button and you go across over there because there's the third screen for the passenger, which can be programmed for certain functions and to show certain things. You can put the navigation on there or alternatively bring the camera back over here and you'll see below the screen etc there's an HDMI plug over there so your front passenger can watch movies if that's what they want while on the move on their own screen and it's set in such a way not to distract the driver. It's little things like that that really do add up. You've got the double USBs again at the front, whether it's A's or C's, you've got, so you've got four USBs over there in actual fact, and a 12 volt. All of this over here, you've obviously got your very thorough climate control system as well, and front seats have heating or cooling and heated steering wheel functions. All these things on a car, I think at this level, you actually expect them these days. You've got over here, the what's becoming common and popular the rotary gear shift well it works it's fine and on the side this one over here is your setting for your transmission as I said just now I've left it in auto you can use sport or for off-roading snow sand mud or rock settings and over here this one is for your ride height adjustment so you've got the different heights for the highest obviously for off-roading lowest when you're parking or wanting passengers and very important over there if you want to put her into four-wheel drive low really important and a nice big feature other features you get on this car you can see the full leather trim you've got that massive panoramic roof these are all standard everything on this car is standard and that's a nice feature it's not one of those you've got to add extra upon extra upon extra but it's the driving experience that counts. I've just found this such a pleasure, so nice to drive, so easy to drive and pleasant. The biggest pleasure I find with this vehicle is knowing that it is such a comfortable, capable, luxury family SUV, yet you also know how exceptionally capable it is if you do want to go off-road. And it can do dinkum proper off-roading and 4 by 4 if that's your thing and that's what you want. So it's got the Jekyll and Hyde almost, but in a good way, in a positive way. It's got the two completely capable persona. I think 99% of them will be enjoyed for their on-road behavior. We know that in the smoothness, but that's beside the point. It certainly competes and compares with anything out there on the market. And at 1.5 can I call it 1.54 million Rand in Overland spec? It's competitive and comparable to other vehicles of this type on the market.